Well, good. Wait for it. Monday morning, Living Water Church. I know it's a shocker that I'm actually getting around to doing this video on a Monday, considering it's called Monday's Motion. Um, but it's just been so busy and crazy, and I actually have a, an incredibly busy schedule coming up this week. Um, but praise the Lord, I do have time to shoot this video this morning. So I um, just want to continue kind of down the road that we were on yesterday as we went through the book of Mark um, and pull out just a, a slightly different concept that I didn't have time to get to. And I'm sure for many of you, you're thinking this is just so much content. There's just so much being driven on a Sunday morning. And that's absolutely true. You're 100% correct. It's like a fire hose on a Sunday morning of content and information. And and really, it would be that much information if I broke this down even further into a, a deeper sequence of verses where we just handled maybe three or four verses on a Sunday morning. It would still be just as much content because that's the, the word of the Lord that we are going through right now. It's alive and it is active. And we can just continue to study the passage over and over and get good, deep insight. Um, we can get the, the words of the Lord, not only that, but we can get the meaning behind them and we can get the direction for our lives as we walk out a life of sanctification. And um, I know we are going rapidly through the book of Mark, but it is great to take in scripture like that sometimes. Uh, if the Roman church who is hearing this down in the catacombs as they're receiving Mark as a letter for the first time sat down and went through in the slow pace that we're going through right now, they would have thought it was crazy. They would have sat down in that Roman church uh, 2,000 years ago and they would have listened to this letter read to them in one sitting. And it's why the word of God has so much power is that it can be read and it can be taken and it can be bound. And there's no way that the people 2,000 years ago would sit down and remember every single little detail about what whoever was uh, reading this letter to them would have been saying from this passage. It's not possible. You can't retain all of the information from Mark, but you're getting a broad concept that's trapped into your brain, a, a broad concept that is binding to your spirit. And that is the divinity of Jesus Christ unfolded before us the fact that Jesus Christ is God himself and he came with all the power and all the authority and all the purpose of going to the cross to die as a substitutionary atonement for you and for me. And, and that's what we're learning in the book of Mark over and over and over each and every week. We're learning the power of Jesus unfolded here on earth. The power of his message, the power of his miracles, and the power of his death, burial, and resurrection is now coming quickly upon us. So what we did yesterday is we went through this whole passage and it, it was so much information about Jesus's arrest. And then this last section, I didn't spend much time on it in church yesterday, but this last section about Peter, when he denies Jesus three times, and, and we did talk about this kind of sure and steadfastness that was in Peter's life. And um, if you guys have been around church for any length of time, you'll, you'll hear, I've heard this kind of like Peter was brash and impetuant and he was rash and he was just always, he was just the go, go, go guy. But when we really sit down and read scripture, when we really sit down and unpack what scripture tells us about Peter, we see that, yes, he may have been brash. Yes, he may have been the one that was always speaking up. But we also see one that was fervently and actively following Christ throughout his last three years of his life. And, and we don't really get a description of Peter before he comes to serve Christ and follow Christ. But we certainly get an idea of how Peter acted when he was with Christ. And he was the one who was always going to be there to serve. He was the one that was always going to be there to give. He was the one that was always going to be there to try to correct and fix and, and guide the situation. He was a leader among men and Jesus used him as such. But we see this leader who has this great kind of statement. He says, even if they all betray you, everyone else, the people that have walked with you for years and years, even if they betray you, Jesus, I will not. And Jesus comes out with the statement and says, you will indeed, you will betray me. And this is a prophecy that's fulfilled only over the course of a short time where Jesus tells Peter, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And we, we read about that section yesterday in Mark. Indeed, that happened. Before the rooster crowed twice, Peter denied Jesus three times. And, and yeah, I believe that Peter was there and he, he was willing to die for Christ. He was willing to take the sword out and fight the Roman legion that was there before him. He was, he was willing to chop the ear off of the high priest's servant while Jesus is standing there because Jesus is right next to him. And he knows that he has all authority on heaven and on earth. He's seen it active in Jesus's life. And he has a lot of comfort standing there right next to Jesus knowing that Jesus can handle this situation. And, and Peter's just acting out what he thinks Jesus is already going to do. But then this switch happens and Jesus tells Peter, no, we're not gonna live by the sword. Put your sword away, Peter. And now Peter's faith starts to 
to question itself. He starts to have doubts within his spirit to the point that now he's following from a distance, it says. He's following from far off Jesus. And he's the one standing in the courtyard in comfort, warming himself by the fire while Jesus is being tortured and, and tried falsely and slapped and ridiculed within the inner courtyard of Caiaphas's house. And, and now Jesus has this great moment of prophecy revealed in Peter's life when Peter does indeed deny the Christ three times and blasphemes against God. The, the one penalty that is deserving of death in the Jewish culture, Peter did in the courtyard where he blasphemed the name of God by denying him. Now, Jesus restores Peter. And guys, we can see a modern day example of this that happens in our life where we're just so gung-ho to serve God. We're, we're ready, we're willing, we're able. This is what we think in our life. And I equate it to, say, dieting. And I know for me, I've actually uh, struggled with um, certain things in my life, but generally the Lord has been very gracious to me. When I make my, my mind up, when I make a decision up in my mind that I'm not going to eat poor food, I'm not going to eat bad food for me, I'm not going to intake a lot of sugar, it's usually generally very easy for me. And I know that's a struggle for many people. That's something that comes naturally and easy to me. But even in that, I've made a decision in my mind, I'm not going to eat a lot of sugar and junk food and, and sweets. But uh, for Christmas this year, what I did for my family is I actually bought a box that comes each and every month that actually is full, a whole box full of candy and sweets from other countries. So every month we get to taste candy and sweets from different countries. It's just unique. It's fun. It's you know something that you don't normally get to do. Well, this past month, we got a box of candy that came in from Mexico, and I thought, I want to try some of this. But I had also made the decision a few weeks prior that I was not going to intake a lot of sugar. And if if you guys know me, I, I'm the guy that will run next door and get McDonald's and um, you know get a double cheeseburger bundle uh, about each and every day. And I made the decision not to do that. I made the decision to go away from candy and soda and sweets, at least for a season of my life here. But that box showed up and my resolve wavered. And I, indeed, I did try a lot of that candy. And I thought, it's so easy in the present time to make a decision. And it's so hard when the temptation is right there before you. It's so challenging. And it, that's why it's so easy to make a decision in your life. I will start a diet right after you get done eating dinner. Very easy. It's so easy in your life to start when you're uh, maybe falling into a temptation over and over and over and you've just fallen into the, that temptation. If you, you've you sated the hunger of your flesh, whatever that temptation is, maybe it's um, a sexual addiction online, maybe it's some kind of food addiction, maybe it's a gaming addiction, maybe it's a drink addiction, whatever it is, you've just sated the lust of your flesh. And at that very moment, right after that, it's so easy to make a commitment and a commandment for the Lord. I will give this up, Lord. I will surrender it until the next time that temptation rises in your life and we fall again into it. And guys, the true mark and test of a Christian in his service to God is not in the times that we fall. The true mark is in the times that we return to him and throw that sin on the foot of the cross and, and beg for mercy from the one who can give it to us. And, and that's the true beauty of the Christian faith, that we don't come to God and we say, I have you in my life. What we come to God and we say, God, I know I'm not deserving, but I'm going to throw myself at the foot of the cross. I'm going to throw myself upon your mercy. And, and I know that you're the only one that can save me. And it says as a promise in his word that each and every time we do that and we come back, that he is gracious to us, that where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And it also goes on to say in Romans that it's not a license for us to sin. It's not something that we should just say, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to go back to the cross later on and, and we'll just, God will forgive me. It's not a big deal. No, because of the grace that's given to us, because of that unmerited, un, unwavering and unearned grace that is offered to us, we should bind our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and desire with our whole being, our whole spirit should be crying out to the Lord to free us from the entrapment of sin in our lives. We should ever be striving to be more like Christ each and every day of our lives, ever pushing on towards the prize that is at hand of the upward calling of Christ Jesus, pushing on towards heaven, pushing on towards eternity, pushing on towards sanctification. We should never falter in that commitment to Jesus. But also we should stand in the grace that he offers to us and, and trust what Romans 8 teaches us, that there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and that every charge that's brought against us here on earth, that God already knows of that charge and he's already placed that squarely on the shoulders of Christ on the cross as a substitutionary atonement for you and for me. And we need to trust in that work that's been done on the cross. Where we falter, we have to ask God to pick us up. Where we fail, we have to ask God to strengthen us and remember and trust that in our weakness, his power is made perfect. So I love you guys. I pray that you understand that in this message that Peter, um, yes, why he did fall, 
God still restored him and God still used him mightily for his kingdom. And it's in that restoration that Peter was able to do a mighty work. And here we see the full circle of Christ come around where it says all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Even in Peter's failing, God used it for greatness. Because now when Peter writes, and this is some issue that I had yesterday in my sermon where I actually quoted a verse that was from James and equated it to Peter, and that was not my intent. I meant to quote a verse from 1 Peter, um, and I mixed it up with James, and actually two different people caught it yesterday. So thank you guys for your active and faithful service to the Lord. I, I quoted uh, a verse from James that said, Count it all joy, brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. And that is indeed by Jesus' brother James. But the verse I meant to quote was from 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 7, where it says, So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, might be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is so important. Uh, the message that Peter is bringing, the tested genuineness of your faith, is the message that Peter brought forth and how much more pointed because Peter understood exactly what it was to have his faith tested, to have the genuineness of his faith unfolded before the Lord. And we get to stand in that today, understanding that even when we fall, the Lord is gracious and he's there to pick us up. So we should trust in him and thank him for that graciousness. Uh, guys, coming up this week, we only really have one event, but it's a very important event for the church. And I would ask, if you've not already done so, invite somebody out to this event. And it might not be somebody that's churched. It might not some, be somebody that normally attends um, any kind of gathering together. But it's a great opportunity just to praise. We're going to sing, sing songs to the Lord and we're going to pray to him. And guys, it's a very low-key event. It's not going to be very formal. And you, you can just invite people out to this. And what you can do, guys, and kind of take a step of boldness, a step of faith here this week is... Uh, even if they say no, at least invite one person. Even if you think there's no possible way they're going to say yes, invite them anyways. And invite them out to an event that's happening this Friday at the church at 7 p.m. And we're going to have a time of praise and prayer to the Lord. So, guys, I know you're probably watching this thinking, there's no possible way I'm going to do that. But I would ask you, as I asked Topher when he was about to preach, when I went and approached him two months ago, and he said, I, I'm not going to do that. And I said, pray about it. So I'd ask you guys this very day, pray about it. Pray before you just say no. Pray before you just think no in your mind. I'm not going to ask anybody and invite somebody out this Friday evening at 7 p.m. for a night of prayer and a night of praise. So, guys, that's what we have going on this week. Now, there are other events that are coming up, but I'm not going to talk about them today. Tune in next week for some more events that are happening in the life of Living Water Church. And here we get to serve the King, and what a joy that is. So I love you guys, and I'll see you later.